But first, it has been a tough week of news. On Friday, the world was shaken by an Australian terrorist who killed 50 Muslim worshippers in New Zealand as they peacefully prayed. The tragedy prompted a lot of soul-searching here in Australia. Could we really have fostered such a vile human? And the answer is no. We fostered two vile humans. Controversial Senator Fraser Anning has again drawn condemnation for repeating his claim that Muslim immigration is a lightning rod for violence. He also released a statement uh, saying that while he's opposed to any kind of violence, uh, the attacks highlight growing fear within the community about what he describes as the increasing Muslim presence. Senator Fraser Anning there really putting the prick in the phrase, gee, that Senator Anning is a hateful prick. <laughs> Could the man too racist for Pauline Hanson and too insane for Bob Catter sink any lower in the aftermath of a shooting? <laughs> yes. Senator Fraser Anning has managed to anger even more people by attending a gun show in Queensland less than 48 hours after the Christchurch massacre. What was Senator Anning trying to achieve by attending? Yeah, well, Georgie, you're asking me to crawl inside the fettered mind of Fraser Anning, and that's something I'm afraid I'm not equipped to do. Come on, Channel 9. Give Chris Yulman the fettered mind-crawling equipment he needs to do his job. <laughs> now, thankfully, thankfully, justice was swift. While we couldn't kick him out of Parliament, we could do the next best thing. Review his access to the Qantas Chairman's <laughs> Lounge. Take that, Anning. Now you're going to have to buy your own Bircher muesli. <laughs> Luckily, one man was ready to step up so Anning could have his breakfast delivered. When people are getting attacked in their own... Uh... <laughs> no, no, no. Hey, 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 hey. Now, I, I cannot condone egg-based violence on the national <laughs> broadcaster, but purely as a tribute to New Zealand, that is the best use of an egg since they invented the pavlova. <laughs> yeah, I said it. I said it. So we are left asking, does Australian society normalise racism? Well, to find out, Sunrise interviewed their in-house racist. This terrorist manifesto almost reads like One Nation, Immigration and Muslim Policy. Do you in uh, any way feel hold, complicit hold on. Hold on. with this atrocity? You explain that one to me. Well, the anti-Muslim rhetoric the, that you espouse constantly here. And if you're wondering why he's so familiar with Pauline Hanson's anti-Muslim rhetoric, it's because she gets invited on to chat about them almost every week. To argue against immigration, to have a go at asylum seekers and migrants, to talk about her burqa stunt and to promote her book featuring a photo of her mid burqa stunt. <laughs> Plus, generally, just plug her other hate-filled policies. Sunrise even paid for her appearances in the lead-up to the 2016 election, resurrecting her political career when it was as dead as the eyes of the cash cow. <laughs> mm. Poor old Cashy, he's just seen too much. <laughs> Next to step up was Prime Minister Scott Morrison, the former head of Tourism Australia and future former head of Australia. <laughs> y you know ScoMo, you know the guy. ScoMo, the cat-wearing, Cronulla Sharks-loving, daggy dad who hates division so much that his government supported Pauline Hanson's white nationalist It's OK to be white vote, who last month said that refugees should be denied medical help because they might be pedophiles, rapists and murderers, and who, at a shadow cabinet meeting in December 2010, reportedly suggested using anti-Islam sentiment to win votes, a story we were reminded of by Walid Ali just hours after the shooting. There are media reports going back eight years of a shadow cabinet meeting in which another senior politician suggested his party should use community concerns about Muslims in Australia failing to integrate as a political strategy. That person's now the most senior politician we have. Yeah, you know, old mate ScoMo. <laughs> and while Waleed was calling for unity, behind the scenes, the PM's office was threatening Waleed with defamation for repeating the eight-year-old report. Morrison has since called this a lie, but the story was confirmed at the time by a number of respected journalists, one of whom I've spoken to directly. But by Monday, good old ScoMo was out saying this. If we are yield to the compulsion to pick sides rather than happy coexistence in this country, we will lose what makes diversity work in Australia. And what we say today is no, no. 
peace and love will triumph. Peace and love will triumph. Has ScoMo has a, had a lobotomy? <laughs> a ScoMo lobomo? <laughs> I mean, I, I am all for this. I'm all for this new PM. All peace and love and go sharkies. I'm all for it. You know, he should be out there making all Australians feel welcome. But if this is the real ScoMo, for the last 12 years, where the bloody hell were you? <laughs> Finally, after all this week's ugly anti-Muslim xenophobia, New South Wales Labor leader Michael Daly decided to set himself apart with some good old-fashioned anti-Asian xenophobia. New South Wales Labor leader Michael Daly says he's sorry for any offence caused by comments he made suggesting young people are being forced out of Sydney by mainly Asian immigrants. Our young children will flee, and who are they being replaced with? They're being replaced by young children, young, young people from typically Asia with PhDs. Check on your children now. Chances are they've already been replaced by an <laughs> Asian child with a PhD. It's... Yeah. <laughs> I know it's terrifying, but you have to admit, it's nice to finally have a doctor in the family. <laughs>